Hello students, welcome to Target AES. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Let us start a very first subject which is strength of materials. A very high weighted subject when it comes to ESC as well as your state PSC exams. Forget this is not of that high importance. Maximum 6 to 7 marks will come in your gate if you are lucky enough. But when it comes to ESC, this has a very high weightage. 15 to 20 questions every year will come. As well as in state PSCs, if you come, if you belong to states like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, the importance even more increases. Why? Because there will be two papers. Okay, paper two and paper three. Paper one will be of general knowledge. Paper two will be of just two subjects: strength of materials and fluid mechanics, which will be for 150 marks. And then again, paper three it will be for civil engineering. The rest of ten subjects it will be for another 150 marks. So total 150, 150, 150, 450 marks. Based on this 450 marks, your selection will be done. So if you are perfect in this one subject alone, strength of materials, in some state PSCs, you will be getting 75 marks from this paper. So this will be a deciding factor whether you are going to get a job or not. Strength of materials and fluid mechanics both. Okay? But strength of materials have a even higher weightage because there are a lot of other subjects like structure analysis, ho gaya, RCC, ho gaya, steel structures. Ho gaya. Somewhere the basics na, they are from strength of materials, right? So once you understand this subject, you will have a huge grip on studying other civil engineering subjects, right? So especially of paper one of ESC, whatever you are seeing, all the six subjects, they are somewhere interlinked with strength of materials, okay? So this becomes a very important subject and let me make it very clear. I am going to teach this subject from a very basic level. Okay, even if you have a small doubt, aapko samajh nahi aare, strain ka matlab kya hai? you just ask me, I will explain you. Because this is a very important for state PSCs and in state PSCs, the questions will be very simple. Okay? So you should be able to do a very simple concepts as well as complex problems. Okay, so we'll take a lot of time. We'll take one full month in studying the strength of materials. And I hope at the end of this month, you will be masters in this topic. So once let us see the weightage, okay, we will see how the weightage is. First let us see the gate, where is our strength of materials, solid mechanics. So we can see the solid mechanics here. So just see year wise how many marks are coming, if you are talking about gate 2016, hardly you are getting like 4 marks, right. So in 2017, 6 marks, 2018, 6 marks. So in recent years, it doesn't have that much high weightage because in gate what happens, you will be getting the distribution between strength of materials and structure analysis, right? So uska structure analysis wala part thoda heavy ho jata hai, solid mechanics wala part thoda dull ho jata hai. The weightage will be less, but together to combine, you will be getting around 10 marks every year from structure analysis less strength of materials. In gate, not that high importance, but when it comes to ESC, so just ESC ka weightage dekh lo, in last 3 years how it is, if you are talking about strength of materials, 15 to 20 questions every year literally. In 2020 there were 19 questions, in 2021, 18 questions, in 2022 there were 14 questions, okay? So it is a subject of very high importance in ESC, not only that, if you have this knowledge, obviously it will help you in structural analysis and other subjects. So you should not say only 15 to 20 questions, on average you will be able to do 25 questions, right? So strength of materials is quite important. So let us start without any delay. Let us start the very fresh chapter of strength of materials. But before going into that, what are we going to study in this song? Strength of materials. What is the concept behind this song? Why we need this subject? See, whenever there is some rigid body and you are applying some forces on it, okay? you are applying some certain forces on it. So obviously there will be some changes in its property, right? The body is going to deform and there will be certain changes in its property. So what is this changes which are happening in the body? We are going to study in a subject strength of materials. Okay. I hope it is very clear, right? So it is a branch of mechanics that concerns with study of forces and its effect on property of deformed body. When you are applying some forces on the body, obviously the body is going to change its dimensions and how the properties are varying. So we are going to study in this wonderful subject. I hope it is very clear. So and one important thing whenever you are applying certain force, obviously the body has to resist it, right? How it will resist? It will develop some internal forces to resist whatever the load which is acting on the body. So 
In this subject, we are going to study the forces, its effects, that means the internal forces which are being developed, as well as what are the changes in the body which is taking place. Okay. We are not interested in the force which is acting on the body. It could be because of anything. It could be because of the temperature. It could be because of the direct force. Okay. Force could be kuch bhi ho sakta. It doesn't matter us. What matters us is how it is changing the property. I hope it is very clear, right? So let us start with the very first chapter, which is simple stress and strain. Before going into this topic, you should have a clear cut idea between two terms. Many people get confused between these two terms. Okay. So they think both are one and the same, but there is a slight difference. The first one is strength. Second one is stiffness. So strength ka kya hota hai? It is an ability of a material to withstand external load. That means how much load a body can take. That is your strength. And what is the stiffness? The resistance of a material to withstand the deformation. See, whenever you are applying certain load, the body kya ho jayega? It will try to deform, right? So, the ability of a body to withstand that, uh, that deformation, right? We are calling it a stiffness. Let us try to understand. So, if uh, there is one human being, okay? He can lift 100 kgs of weight. Okay? He can lift 100 kgs of weight. So, that 100 kgs will be its st his strength. Okay, if you are increasing the load, what will happen? He can't lift it. Okay, he will obviously fall down. Okay, same happens with concrete or any other substance. For example, let us take, you are taking a concrete block. Okay, it can take certain amount of load. Okay, so if you are increasing the load, what will happen? Obviously, it will crack and it will break. I hope it is very clear, right? So the maximum load which this block can take without any failure, we are calling the strength of that particular body. Is clear? Ho gaya? Next is stiffness. See, whenever we are trying to apply this load, okay, so obviously the body will be getting deformed, right? Right. So there will be certain bodies. You can understand this. If you are taking a steel, you apply the load, okay, it will be very stiff, right? Thoda deformation dega. If you are taking rubber, apply the load, obviously it will show you more deformation. So what is the stiffness? It is the resistance of a material to withstand the deformations. If something is not easily deforming, then we call it as high stiff material. Things are clear, right? So both sound similar strength and stiffness, but there is a clear cut difference between them. Okay. So before starting the subject, there are certain assumptions which we take in calculating strength of materials. Okay. So what are these assumptions? There are five important assumptions. Very important. Always remember this. In state PSCs, a plenty of questions have been asked from these five points. At least, at least 10 to 20 questions I have seen. If you open the previous state PSC questions of different different states, na, itne questions niklenge, sirf e paanch points hai. What are these assumptions? The first assumption is material of the body is solid and continuous. That means there should not be any cracks whenever we are finding the strength of a particular body. Okay. Obviously, baat hai. if there are certain cracks, let us say you are doing some experiment on concrete, but this is a cracked concrete. Yahan pe, yahan pe, yahan pe pura cracked hai. Will it give the strength which it is determined to give? No, right? So obviously, this type of material we are not studying. We are, uh, whenever I am talking about a body, let me make it very clear. It is solid and continuous. That means it is free from any cracks. It is not a cracked body. Okay. Next one is material is homogeneous and isotropic. Give it 10 star. You should know the difference between homogeneous and isotropic. For example, let us say there is one particular body or a material and let me take any three points, okay? Any three points on it, okay? If the properties on this all three points are identical in a particular direction, then I will call it as homogeneous. For example, let us say uh, in this is x1, x2, x3. Okay, so at this point one in x direction, at this point two in x direction, at this x point three in x direction, if the properties are identical, okay, this material is showing identical properties along this particular direction, then I will call it as homogeneous material. Okay, so similarly, you can correlate with y. Okay, if the properties at all these three points or identical in y direction, then we call it that particular body as homogeneous. What is isotropic? Take any one particular point and if the properties are same in any, uh, any direction, for example, 
uh, you are showing the same strength in x direction you are showing the same strength in y direction and you are showing the same strength in z direction then obviously i'm calling that body as what isotropic okay samajh ne agaya na difference so homogeneous so you take different different points if in a particular direction if your properties are identical then i am calling it as homogeneous okay if at a particular point in all the direction properties are same then i am calling it as isotropic okay what are these different properties which you are talking about obviously we will know by next module in second module we will be talking about what are the various properties of interest in strength of materials and aapko ek concept clear se samajh mein aa jayega so far i hope it is clear the next one self weight of material is ignored okay so whenever i am talking about uh, how much load a body can take i am ignoring the weight of body i am imagining that my particular body of interest doesn't have any weight okay so that's why in uh, strength of material structure and analysis whenever i am taking a particular body i just represent it with a line i am least bothered about the self weight of a body for example if someone is asking what is the reaction of a beam generally beam kaisa rahega it will be in three dimension it will be something like this right so there will be certain loading and the people will be asking you what is the reaction see whenever i am calculating the reaction in st structural analysis because that subject is already completed you should be aware i have never calculated the weight of the body right so for example if 10 kilo newton load is falling i wrote it as 5 kilo newton and 5 kilo newton agreed or not if the load is acting at the center i just wrote 5 kilo newton 5 kilo newton but originally what is happening it is not 5 kilo newton 5 kilo newton there is the load and then the weight of the beam right let us say beam ka load aa raha hai some 2 kilo newton total to reaction banega aapka 6 kilo newton and 6 kilo newton because 10 plus 2 total load is 12 6 kilo newton 6 kilo newton will be your reaction but in strength of materials but in structural analysis we have seen that we take if 10 kilo newton load is acting we ignore the weight and 5 kilo newton 5 kilo newton we used to take that means what are we doing we are ignoring the self weight of material okay to yaad rakhna in som and structural analysis ignore the self weight of material and you can just represent the material with a line a three dimensional beam or column whatever you want you can represent it with a simple line but in rcc in steel structures obviously whenever you are taking reactions phulomer you have to take the weight of beam i hope it is very clear for you yaad rakhoge because that is the real concepts right this is just build up of concepts and in rcc and steel structures we apply this concepts so there we are taking the weight of the structure but in som and structure analysis we ignore it next is a very important one super position principle is valid what is the super position principle let me erase this super position principle obviously we will learn more about all these properties as we go forward but we should have a rough idea now itself so let us talk about super position principle so let us say uh, 10 kilo newton load is acting so what will be the reaction let us say it is acting at exactly center okay there is a beam at the center there is a load of 10 kilo newton so the reactions will be 5 kilo newton and 5 kilo newton theek hai i hope it is very clear so i can write this 10 kilo newton as the summation of as the summation of what i can write it as some 5 kilo newton plus 5 kilo newton or let us say 6 kilo newton plus 4 kilo newton theek hai so now let us see the two cases two cases in which only part of this load is acting let us say 6 kilo newton and another case in which 4 kilo newton is acting ab reactions nikalna so if you are taking the reaction for 6 kilo newton you will be getting 3 here 3 here for 4 kilo newton you will be getting 2 here 2 here so add these two reactions 3 plus 2 is equals to 5 okay so this is principle of superposition okay so if you are taking loads individually if you are dividing the loads then the summation will give you what is the reaction we are getting or what is the property we are getting because of the total load okay so this is called as superposition principle and it is valid when it comes to strength of materials okay so there are certain places where it is not valid we'll study later but basic assumption kya kehta hai superposition principle is valid and write down a very important note 
this note was asked in several state psc even when i was writing exam this note was asked so the first one is it is valid superposition please write down very important give it 10 star give it 10 star so superposition principle is only valid when okay when deformations are small theek hai agar कुछ लार्ज डिफॉर्मेशन हो गया तो ऑब्वियसली क्या हो जाएगा द बॉडी विल लूज इज इलास्टिक प्रॉपर्टीज एंड डोंट एक्सपेक्ट द सुपरपोजिशन प्रिंसिपल विल स्टिल बी वैलिड ठीक है सो सुपरपोजिशन इज वैलिड ओनली व्हेन द डिफॉर्मेशन आर स्मॉल नेक्स्ट दिस व्हाट एवर डिफॉर्मेशन इज देयर राइट इट इज लीनियर फंक्शन ऑफ द लोड डिफॉर्मेशन इज लीनियर फंक्शन ऑफ लोड yani it will be in a straight line manner okay i hope it is very clear right not in a curved manner it will be in a straight line manner so superposition validity kahan pe aayega only when the deformations are very small okay and then deformation is a linear function of load i hope it is very clear for you yaad rakhoge next comes saint venance principle is valid give it another five star bahut sare exams mein pucha gaya hai saint venance principle what is the saint venance principle काफी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक है सी यू माइट नॉट बी नोइंग दिस टर्म स्ट्रेस येट हम पढ़ेंगे एक पांच मिनट में पढ़ाई करेंगे स्ट्रेस के बारे में बट आई आई होप यू नो इट राइट वेन अ सर्टेन लोड एक्ट्स ऑन अ बॉडी द स्ट्रेस वी टेक फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट से द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ओके इफ यू आर सींग फ्रॉम द टॉप यू आर सींग समथिंग लाइक दिस राइट एक तो रेक्टेंगल है राइट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस एरिया ओके दिस एरिया द टॉप एरिया सो लेट से दैट इज ए ओके so what is the stress along this body it is p by a we take wherever you want at whatever point you cut it we will call the stress as p by a but the reality kya hai so whenever we have a body and the load is applied common sense use karo apna so at the top as the load is acting very close to it yahan pe stress kya rahega stress zyada rahega the stress will be high right the stress will be high whereas when you come to lower parts obviously the stress whatever you have the stress whatever you have it decreases common sense ki baat hai right so obviously your common sense is right but why we are taking p by a that is saint venance principle in saint venance principle what actually is happening is let us take this breadth of the body is b okay or t whatever you want okay in the top b by 2 okay in the top b by 2 for example let us say this b is some 5 and the depth is some 30 okay 30 cm and 5 cm theek hai so in top b by 2 that is for the top 2.5 cm kafi chhota sa area the stress let us say the average stress i am writing the formula is p by a right load divided by area in the top that area 2.5 cm if i am talking about the breadth as 5 cm it will be very much high it will be almost in the magnitude of 1. Point, uh, some 37 like that okay let me let me just confirm it 1.37 sigma average something it will be okay the actual stress in this top part will be very high 1.37 sigma average which is 1.37 p by a and in the next b by 2 it will decrease to some 1.027 and after that b by 2 it will come to almost p by a our sigma average i hope it is very clear right so this is saint venance principle that even though you have a variation of stress for example uh, to be clear where the load is being applied the stress will be more and gradually your stress what will happen it will decrease we are ignoring this effect and to be easy for solving what we are taking we are taking the stress anywhere on the body as uh, average stress which will be your p by a I hope it is very clear right this is saint venance principle theek hai unhone kaha the variation of stress ignore kar do or else problem complicate ho jayega so just to simplify it we are taking p by a and it will not show any huge effect on problems okay so what we are doing from now on if i want to calculate stress it will be load divided by area but let me make it very clear stress ka matlab ye nahi hai load divided by area wo to pressure ho jayega na so stress is different than load per area what is actually happening see when a load is being applied on a body 
if you are applying a certain load on the body what will happen obviously every action has equal and opposite reaction action to aa gaya so what is the reaction obviously the body has to show the reaction so there will be a resisting force which will be developed in this body agreed or not तो ये क्या होगा इवन इफ देर इज अ पॉइंट लोड बीइंग अप्लाइड देर विल बी अ रेसिस्टेंस विच इज बीइंग बिल्ड ऑल ओवर द बॉडी अग्रीड और नॉट सो व्हाट इज द स्ट्रेस इट इज नथिंग बट दिस रेसिस्टिंग फोर्स व्हाट एवर इज बीइंग डेवलप ओके यू कैन ऐड इनफाइनाइट फोर्सेस यार यू कैन ऐड इनफाइनाइट फोर्सेस यू कैन हैव यू कैन अप्लाई अ लोड ऑन अ बीम यू कैन ट्राई टू बेंड द बीम राइट यू कैन ट्राई टू बेंड द बीम ओके इन एवरी केस whatever you want to yeah, in whatever manner you want to apply the force obviously the body it will be trying to develop this resisting forces right or else what will happen if there is no resisting force the body is going to break instantly agreed or not so if there is some load acting obviously the body if it is bearing it that means there is some uh, resistance internal resistance force being developed agreed or not so what is happening this internal resistance force divided by the area you will be getting this stress i hope it is very clear right it is nothing but the total internal resistance per unit area ek unit area mein kitna internal resistance generate ho raha hai that is nothing but your stress okay i hope it is very clear and what is the unit of stress unit of stress hota hai newton per meter square this is the general denotation okay but you can also denote it in newton per mm square it is up to you ओके, सो हाउ एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डिट यू कैन डिनोट ये जो न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर है वन न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर वी आर राइटिंग इट एज पैसकल ओके यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज पैसकल सो इन सम एग्जाम इफ इट इज रिटर्न टेन पैसकल स्ट्रेस इज बीइंग डेवलप्ड ओके सो वट इज द स्ट्रेन लाइक दैट क्वेश्चन इज गिवेन सो वेन एवर यू सी पैसकल दैट मीन्स टेन न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर इज द स्ट्रेस आई होप इट इज वेरी क्लियर राइट and what is this newton per meter square can you uh, imagine the figure right samajh nahi aata hai ki nahi aata hai see for example let us say mass of one body is 1 kg mass ka unit kya hota hai kg hota hai gram mein aata hai milligram mein aata hai so this is mass what is the force being exerted by this that would be the force equivalent to your 1 kg mass so 1 kg force you are going to get this 1 kg force is equals to how much you can write 1 kg force or you can just write it in newton which will be 9.8 newton okay so 1 kg mass agar aapke hath pe rakhte ho so what is the force you are being uh, field that is 9.8 newton i hope it is very clear right so whenever someone is saying 100 newton force uh, is acting that means You can imagine एक टेन के जी बॉडी आपके हाथ पे रख दिया है सो अप्रोक्सीमेटली यू आर गेटिंग हंड्रेड न्यूटन फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन योर बॉडी सो दिस टाइप ऑफ सिंपल मैथमेटिक्स यू हैव टू डू इन यूर ब्रेन सो दैट यू विल गेट अ रफ आइडिया वॉट एक्चुअली इज हैपनिंग देर ओके सो ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर द स्ट्रेस क्या होता है फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया राइट द टोटल इंटरनेट रेजिस्टेंस पर यूनिट एरिया सो आई एम इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज आई एम कॉलिंग फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर फोर्स तो आ गया न्यूटन पे and area generally we measure in meter square that's why the units of stress i am writing it as newton which is force divided by area which is generally represented by meter square i hope it is very clear right so 1 newton per meter square is also called as pascal in simple language and uh, you have to learn different units right in examination three important units will be given one is kilo pascal सो so, किलो का मतलब होता है टेन क्यूब सो यू विल नॉट हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम इन दिस सो वन किलो पैसकल इज इक्वल्स टू थाउजेंड पैसकल और टेन टू द पावर ऑफ थ्री पैसकल सिमिलरली मेगा पैसकल नेक्स्ट इज वन मेगा पैसकल मेगा पैसकल यू शुड बी नोइंग इट इज टेन टू द पावर ऑफ सिक्स राइट सो टेन टू द पावर ऑफ सिक्स पैसकल दैट इज जीरो 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 राइट नेक्स्ट आता है गीगा पैसकल so which is 10 to the power of 9 pascal so these three are the very common terminology we will be using in all our questions ek to hota hai pascal mein but pascal load is very less right you can imagine so 1 pascal is 1 newton per meter square right ye kitna bada area hai 1 meter square area 1 meter into 1 meter right 100 cm into 100 cm 100 cm into 100 cm on that 1 newton is acting right 10 newton is 1 kg almost 9.8 newton is 1 kg right equivalent to 1 kg so you can imagine 
नेग्लिजिबल अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस इज बीइंग डेवलप्ड राइट तो आपको ना न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर में ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम नहीं दिया जाएगा सो व्हाट एवर प्रॉब्लम यू आर सीइंग राइट इट विल बी इन मेगा पास्कल्स ओके इट विल बी इन मेगा पास्कल्स और गीगा पास्कल्स आई होप इट इज वेरी क्लियर राइट सो 10 टू द पावर ऑफ 6 न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर राइट यू कैन इमेजिन द मैग्नीट्यूड सो सम ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लोट यू कैन डिवाइड एंड चेक ओके 10 टू द पावर ऑफ 6 अप्रोक्सीमेटली यू कैन से If 10 to the power of 6 is acting without any calculation, let us take one kg force is equals to 10 newton. Okay, so you can write it as divided by 10. 10 to the power of 5 kgs. Yani 10 to the power of 5 kgs. Yani right, almost one lakh uh, kg mass is acting in one meter square area. Right. Whenever we are talking about buildings, right? कुछ ऐसा ही स्ट्रेस बनता है ना बिकॉज लॉर्ड ऑफ लोड्स ऑफ फॉलोइंग ऑन इट सो ऑलमोस्ट एक वन लैख के जीज क्या हो रहा है मीटर स्क्वायर एरिया पे पड़ रहा है इफ यू आर टेकिंग वन मीटर वन मीटर दिस मच अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस इज फॉलोइंग सो यू कैन इमेजिन राइट सो ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लोट्स विल बी एक्टिंग दैट्स वाई वी विल बी टॉकिंग ओनली इन एम पी ए जी पी ए के पी ए ओनली सो नाउ कमिंग टू वन इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म ये जो मेगा पैसकल है एम पी ए It can be also written as Newton per mm square. It can be also written as Newton per mm square. Why? So let us just write Newton per mm square. Newton per mm square. See, one mm is ten to the power of minus three meter. You know it, right? Because one meter is thousand mm. So one mm क्या हो जाएगा? Ten to the power of minus three meter हो जाएगा. So mm square is there. So Newton per ten to the power of minus three. You can write it as meter, right? Square. So you will be getting newton divided by ten to the power of minus six meter square, right? So one newton per mm square is equals to ten to the power of six newton per meter square, or one mega pascal. I hope it is very clear for you. So in exams, wherever you see newton per mm square, that means uh one mega pascal load is uh, force is taking place there i hope it is very clear right so always un- try to understand what is happening one newton per mm square if you are taking a very small area okay 1 mm into 1 mm iske upar act kar raha hai almost one newton force i hope it is very clear right samajh nahi aa raha if i am talking about 10 newton per mm square what does this mean 10 newton per mm square right so 1 mm square which is a very small area very 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 small area itna tiny area pe almost 1 kg ka mass aapne rakh diya hai i hope it is very clear right because 10 newton approximately 1 kg mass so if you are keeping that on this small area very tiny area then you will be getting 10 newton per mm square stress i hope it is very clear you can imagine this right dimag mein dikh raha hai na aapko quantity so once you understand the quantity right it will help you in future problems okay so you can correlate ki itne load pe to nahi tutega right in many many problems you can solve okay if the stress options values are less right you can just see and say are yaar steel to itna jhel lega steel cannot be broken so easily so you can just directly ignore that options that's why try to imagine this imagination will help you in solving lot of questions in future okay so let us not complicate things so there are different types of stress there are four generally different types of stress and then we have lot of different type of strain longitudinal strain lateral strain volumetric strain shear strain so all this we'll study in the module number okay so in module 2 it will be very important for us so i will teach this first chapter in five modules in five modules the first chapter will be done and after this module now we are going to solve lot of a double e level questions because that is the main important okay so yahan se na agar aap o samajh gaye na to ye se bhi kar loge and gate questions will be little bit complex so at the end of this entire subject there will be some 50 odd questions of importance which we will try to solve after building this concept it will be very easy for us okay have a nice day see you in module number 2